Intel Academy Masterclass 2022. And what we'll be looking at uh, throughout the session is introduction to blockchain technology. Okay, so CTEL. CTEL stands for Center for Technology Education and Innovation Lab. So that's the full meaning of CTEL. And uh, this is an organization, an IT organization uh, headed by me. Yeah, we are into, my team and I, we are into IT related uh, products and services. So who we are, so CTEL is a transformative IT company with the aim of exposing the youth and organizations in Ghana and beyond through education and training on how you can utilize the opportunities of both emerging and present technologies for the improvement of your lives and society. So that is who we are. Uh, our goal is to educate and train people in present techno present technologies implements technologies that are already in place or in use and also emerging technologies let's say technologies that are not widely known by maybe the world or continent yet as in the case of blockchain technology and uh, cryptocurrencies we can say in africa they are emerging, emerging technologies, and even other parts of the developed world, not everybody really understands what these technologies are. So we at CTEL, it's our goal to educate the youth or people along these technologies and how they can maximize the opportunities therein or in it. And our mission is to become a world-class, impactful, and innovative IT center that influences lives, societies, and Africa as a whole. And so far, my team and I in CTEL, we are currently partnering with uh, a blockchain ecosystem known as Internet Computer. And so far, we've educated over 600 young people in tertiary institutions and communities in Ghana about blockchain technology and the opportunities that are available. And our goal this year is to educate over 2,000 young people to actually know what's going on. And so uh, that is what we do. And uh, I think I wouldn't talk about the vision again. It, it still boils down to our mission and who we are. All right, so uh, this is the course outline for the master class we are having. So after the entire session, or after the series of classes we are going to have from now to, uh, to the third week, we are going to cover a bit of all this. So we'll look at a, a brief overview of blockchain. What is it? What is blockchain? Maybe we, we've heard about blockchain. We've heard about cryptocurrencies. So it's good we know what these technologies are. So we'll look at the overview of blockchain. Uh, we'll look at the fundamentals of cryptocurrencies. That is introduction to cryptocurrencies. Then overview of NFTs. NFTs are non-fungible tokens. We'll look at overview of smart contracts. we also look at the metaverse, brief overview of the metaverse. Then again, we'll look at uh, types, types and categories of cryptocurrencies. Then we'll look at introduction to wallets and exchanges. Exploring exploring uh, we also look at exploring funding opportunities in blockchain ecosystems so maybe you are you are here and you have an idea and think technology can be used to solve that idea so you have the opportunity to put it in the form of an application or a proposal 
and submit it to some blockchain ecosystems and you are likely to get funding once what you want to do is justifiable and your budget is uh, actually reasonable or feasible enough and also and i will take you through how to earn income from uh, ecosystem based ac activities that is from blockchain platforms and communities where you can make cool monies and uh, at least you can use it to better your lives and uh, do some few stuffs with uh, with it yeah so far i have almost up to 10 people who have who are benefiting from these things and some of them are even on this call and uh, maybe in due time uh, i will elaborate more on these opportunities so basically these are the things we are going to look at maybe on screen they look so simple and straightforward but they are uh, they are quite technical but i'll take my time to break down most of the technical concepts into understandable bits so that at the end of the day we all understand something or take something out from this master class we are having we'll be looking at a brief overview of blockchain what blockchain is all about on october 31st 2008 Satoshi Nakamoto released the Bitcoin white paper outlining a pure peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash or digital asset transfer system. So in 2008, this was actually the birth of blockchain. But this was when Sat Satoshi Nakamoto released the Bitcoin white paper. Satoshi Nakamoto it has its roots from Japan because it's a Japanese term. But actually, uh, this is not the name of the person. Uh, so nobody actually knows. And is this person that created Bitcoin, Bitcoin blockchain? But till date, nobody knows the person. So it's a coded name. And uh, since 2008 till now, nobody really knows who that person is. But people have, have come out with a lot of guesses. Some, some said it's Elon Musk, the current richest man in the world. Others also said, no, it is uh, the combination of some world-class companies, IT companies, that come that came together to create Bitcoin, and this is how they did it. So they are saying that the SA here, SA stands for Samsung, so the SA is Samsung, then the T O S H I stands for Toshiba, then the N A K A stands for Nakamichi. It's also another tech firm. Then the M O T O stands for what? Uh huh. Who can tell me? Is that Motorola? Motorola. Yes, Motorola. Good. So people have the view that it is these giant IT or mobile firms that came together to invent or create Bitcoin. Well, but these are all speculation so we don't know maybe if any of you also knows the person you can bring the person out with proofs and maybe you will be <laughs> rewarded for that okay so this is the first popular implementation of blockchain and it is attributed as birthing today's blockchain industry so bitcoin blockchain is the first blockchain that was ever created in the history of the world that was in october 2008 and that was no, uh, known as the birthday for the blockchain industry 
So you can't talk about blockchain without making reference to Bitcoin because that is the mother coin. Just like we have Adam and Eve being our first parents on earth, so it is with blockchain. Bitcoin is the parent uh, blockchain or the first blockchain to ever be created. Then now we have several blockchains as well. So since then, additional blockchains have been popularized or created. So examples are Ethereum. I know some of us have heard about Ethereum. So Ethereum is a blockchain. Cardano is a blockchain. Polkadot is a blockchain. Solana is a blockchain. We are internet computer is a blockchain. So these are just some few examples of blockchains we have. I don't know whether this slide is clear. Is it clear for everybody? Yes. All right. Okay. So now let's look at what blockchain actually is. Blockchain. What is blockchain technology? So blockchain is a technology. So it's a technology that permits transactions to be gathered into blocks and recorded. So basically that is what blockchain is. So it permits transactions to be gathered into blocks and recorded. And when we say it permits transactions to be gathered into blocks, blocks in IT or yeah, in ICT means set of data. So when we say blocks or block, it means set of data. Just like the normal blocks we have. You don't just have block from one material. That is a combination of sand, cement, water, and at the end of the day, you have these pieces of materials brought together. Uh -huh. And that makes it a block. So that is the same uh, logic here. So uh, blockchain is a technology that pro uh, permits transactions to be gathered into blocks and recorded. So to be gathered in what similar components and recorded on the blockchain and how is the recording done so it cryptographically chains the data in a chronological order so when we say cryptographically chains uh, the data when we say something is cryptographic it means uh, it is uh, masked or hidden hidden from normal view maybe let's say uh, I want to send uh, maybe a letter to another person and maybe the one I'm sending it to I don't want the person to understand the contents of the letter so I can decide maybe I want to say hello and I can represent the hello with one two three four five and now send it through the messenger to be taken to whoever I want to deliver it to. So once the messenger opens it, what will the messenger see? The messenger will just see one, two, three, four, but will not understand what the language is. But the intended recipient will be made aware that that one, two, three, four signifies hello. So once that is done, uh, uh, th you can say, uh, that is uh, cryptography you have kind of encrypted the the text from normal view so that if any other person picks it who is not the intended receiver it will not make meaning to the person so that is how blockchain actually records the data so it cryptographically chains the blocks in a chronological order so it means that once data one is sent the second data will just come and be right behind data one. So data two will be behind data one. Then if data three is coming, data three will also be behind data two and data one. So that is in a chronological order. So that is what, uh, th that is how data is represented on the blockchain. And 
Finally, it also allows the resulting ledger to be accessed by different servers. So the beauty of blockchain is that once the data is stored in a chronological order on the blockchain, it can be accessed by different servers. So it doesn't just go to one computer or one machine, but the number of computers that, that, that is connected to that blockchain system, they all have the ability to access that data that has been represented on the blockchain. So this is a brief explanation of what blockchain is. We also have types of blockchain. So blockchain can be grouped or categorized into three main types. So that is those that have been created and those that are yet to even be created. So they can be grouped into three. We have permissionless blockchains. We have permissioned blockchain or hybrid. That is both a combination of the mechanisms of permissionless and permissioned will give you hybrid. So when we say permissionless blockchains, what do we mean by that? So permissionless blockchains allow any user to join the blockchain network pseudo anonymously. That is to become uh, nodes of the network. When we say to become nodes of the network, it means to become a computer of the network or a server of the network and do not limit the privileges of the network's uh, nodes or computers. So the permissionless, just as the name sounds, means that anybody at all is free to join that particular blockchain. Any computer is free to join and you can have access to resources on the blockchain without permission. So you don't need permissions. It's not restricted. So you can access information. You can you can you, you can transact uh, you can buy crypto you can buy currencies like cryptocurrencies from exchanges without having to pass through any third party so that makes it permissionless and nobody is monitoring what the amount you can use to buy maybe a particular crypto or buy a particular goods or service on the blockchain so that makes it permissionless you are free to actually do what you want to do on the blockchain but we also have permissioned blockchains just as the name goes permissioned blockchains so they have limit access to the network and may also limit the rights of those computers on the network so here activities are limited and restricted so you can't you don't have the freedom to do whatever you want to do like buying of cryptocurrencies, building of applications on the blockchain, maybe performing transactions to a certain limit or amount. This one, there are restrictions. And if you need maybe change of these restrictions, then you must contact the owners of the blockchain platform or the community that is governing it for them to extend your rights or privileges on the network. So the hybrid, I'm not going to talk about the hybrid. It is just a combination of the permissionless and the permissioned. That is, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit open and also has uh, restrictions. So uh, there are some things you can do without restrictions and there are other activities you have to seek for permission so that access will be granted for you to actually do it we also have others we call consortium consortium uh, blockchains maybe you're at your leisure time you can read around those ones i don't want to touch on them because that is maybe an advanced level but for the basic level once we once we know these three categories of blockchains then we are cool to go are we all okay up to this point Yes. All right. We'll now look at the nature of blockchains, how blockchain actually looks like.
So unlike the centralized uh, hub and spoke type of network we have, when we say the hub and spoke, can you see the first diagram? Can you all see the first diagram? So we have yeah we have the big circle in the middle with hub written in it then we have the spokes that are the nodes the green green balls around it so typically this is how uh, our systems are or our financial institutions are in the uh, in the world so we have a central bank or we have a central server where individuals or machines you make requests to the server or to the hub and this is where maybe the request can be given maybe you request to withdraw uh, maybe one million Ghana cities so once you write the check or issue that command from maybe uh, your mobile uh, your online mobile banking app it will, it, it will go to that particular bank and they will now decide whether to release that monies for you or not so it's more or less like centralized so a centralized system and here when there is uh, a collapse of the hub or a collapse of the bank eventually you lose everything you lose your money you lose your resources you lose data and everything so that is how the central banks are and uh, this is not so healthy for uh, a free market and so therefore this is how blockchain network actually looks like so they are distributed so we can see from the second diagram we can't see any central point of command or authority so we can see that the, the network is interconnected with all machines and nodes or nodes so the network is connected to all other machines on the network so here there's nothing like a central point of failure even when one machine is taken out the others will still function so that is why we will hear that uh, I don't know whether some of you have heard it China has banned Bitcoin like three times <laughs> i think some time ago they banned them and said they are banning bitcoin but you ban the thing and it's not bannable because it's not a central system where maybe one person is sitting and operating it or one company is sitting and operating it it is distributed it is distributed across the globe so we have ma mining mining uh, companies across the world so it's not only china we have bitcoin mining companies so we have some in china asia china we have some in the us we have some in africa we have some in europe so you see how do you close down something that is not centralized so that actually this is actually what is making the blockchain ecosystem so interesting and it's going to bring back freedom to everyone to be able to have control of your resources have control of your money and use your money anywhere at all you find yourself all right so blockchain is also built on these consensus mechanisms or uh, these are the protocols that are fixed or that are developed into blockchain so okay so we have many consensus mechanisms so each has its advantages and disadvantages so some of the consensus mechanisms for blockchain are we have proof of work so bitcoin is built with proof of work i'm not going to explain that into detail but if you want to go the extra mile to read under what proof of work blockchains are you can read and with proof of work they use what we call mining so they use mining to actually run the blockchain then we also have proof of stake blockchains then we have proof of elapsed time 
proof of activity, proof of burn, proof of capacity, proof of importance, among others. So these are some of the technologies or the protocols that blockchains are built with. So maybe a blockchain can have one or two or three or more of these consensus mechanisms implemented on it. And so if you want to read more about them, then you can, you, you can do so at your convenient time. So basically, this is how blockchain works. So this is how we have step one, step two, step three here, step four, step five, and step six. So, so let's say in step one, let's say a transaction is requested. That is maybe uh, Aku wants to send money. So so a transaction is requested that is the step one so once the transaction is requested so what happens is that since we said the blockchain network is decentralized it means every node or every computer on the network has access to the request or data that is being sent so the transaction is broadcasted to the network and when we say broadcasted we all understand what broadcast is maybe if you have if you have uh sent a broadcast message on whatsapp you should know what broadcast means that is you send one message and it goes to over 100 of people that is the number of people on your broadcast list and i know some of you who are into online business advertising your products you have your broadcast list where you send a, a, a message a general message to the broadcast list and it goes to individual chats so a transaction is requested so the trans in step two the transaction is broadcasted to the network so you can see here the arrow was just one but now in step two you can see that the arrows are three it means that the request has been broadcasted across the network so and in step three so the network is validating the transaction using cryptography so now at least you should know what the cryptography is so even though the data is broadcasted just like i said maybe you are sending hello to another person through a messenger so the messenger will not see hello the, the messenger will see one two three four so that is how the, the data or the request is being sent so if it's not to the intended user you will just see that a message has been sent but you will not know you do not know what the contents of that message is so that is the cryptography at work so in step four so the transaction is represented online as a block so like i said so once the transaction is initiated is now in, uh, represented online as a block or set of data it's represented as a block or set of of data actually so the network is validating the transaction using cryptography so you can see a padlock in step three so it means that it is actually secured that money you are sending the transaction is secure said that people or, or computers on the blockchain cannot read what you are sending so it is encrypted or unless it gets to the intended recipient or the intended wallet or computer that is where the person will now be able to uh, understand the message because that is the intended uh, destination it is heading to any other person on the blockchain will not be able to read the content of that message or data or transaction you are sending so the transaction is represented online as a block and i know now we we all know what a block is when, when we say block is represented online as data so that is the transaction here and in step five so the block is added to the existing blockchain so now i don't know whether the name is now making sense blockchain so you can see that this is the first block here this is the second block and third block. so the block is added to existing blocks so from my first explanation of blockchain so uh, a block is added to what 
the existing one which are chained in a chronological order so this is the first block this is the second one that is chained to the first one and this is the third block which is chained to the pre uh, previous uh, block so now you see where the name comes from blockchain so it means the data are linked to one another okay so welcome to the world of cryptocurrencies so so cryptocurrencies so let's take note of what i am going to say cryptocurrencies are run on the blockchain blockchain is the platform where cryptocurrencies are being run on we don't have cryptocurrency we don't have cryptocurrencies running separately and blockchain cryptocurrency is a technology or is a use case on the blockchain does that make sense yeah. uh -huh. it's a standard cryptocurrency that you have bitcoin and blockchain and all that so it's under blockchain we now have cryptocurrencies so blockchain is the mother is the mother and cryptocurrencies are the siblings or no the children of the blockchain so cryptocurrencies uh, dApps dApps are decentralized applications nfts non-fungible tokens metaverse so these are all children of the blockchain so blockchain is the universal platform where these things cryptocurrencies are run on the metaverse is run on nfts are run on and applications are run on does that make sense yes yeah. okay so you know we started by mentioning bitcoin so now let, let let me even go further for you so bitcoin bitcoin is a blockchain on its own so let's take note bitcoin bitcoin is a blockchain on its own ethereum is a blockchain on its own ethereum is a blockchain on its own solana is a blockchain on its own cardano is a blockchain on its own and they are at the same time cryptocurrencies again so the blockchain is called bitcoin and the cryptocurrency that runs on that bitcoin blockchain is also called bitcoin does that make sense yeah uh -huh. so ethereum 2 is the same thing so ethereum is a blockchain so it means it's, it's the mother platform but their cryptocurrency is also called ethereum blockchains runs cryptocurrencies but uh, cryptocurrencies are not necessarily blockchains because we can have one blockchain running several cryptocurrencies so that is one thing we should take note of too as well yes so not all cryptocurrencies are blockchain are blockchains though they run on blockchains but they are not blockchains on their own so uh, as time goes on we'll get to understand all this so some cryptocurrencies we hear of are running on other blockchains so for example on ethereum like this so even though ethereum is the is the is the is, is the main cryptocurrency of the ethereum blockchain but we have other cryptocurrencies that are running on the ethereum blockchain so they are not blockchains on their own but they are cryptocurrencies that are running on uh, ethereum blockchain yeah so uh, let's take note of that okay the next thing is that let's look at what uh, cryptocurrencies are in brief so the name cryptocurrency the name cryptocurrency is coined from the combination of two concepts cryptography and currency so oh, by now we know what cryptography is right so 
Cryptography involves the use of advanced mathematical concepts to secure our funds to ensure that nobody is able to spend their funds is able to understand the message you have sent so that is that is cryptocurrency so uh, a combination of cryptography and currency so involves the use of advanced mathematical concepts or models to secure our funds to ensure that nobody is able to spend our money or our funds good so we have some examples of cryptocurrencies there are many currently we have over we have over 10,000 we have over 10,000 cryptocurrencies we have over 10,000 if you want to know the cryptocurrencies we have uh, you can just you can just take note of this uh, you, can, you can always check from uh, coin market cap coin market cap coin market cap dot com so you can take note of it once you come to coin market cap you are able to actually check the cryptocurrencies we have can you all see my screen yes yeah so we have so examples of cryptocurrencies we have bitcoin we have ethereum we have uh, theta or terra that's with their abbreviations beside them so we have bnb we have Cardano. Yes, is somebody saying something? So we have a whole lot of them. Look at them. Look at them. A lot. Can you see them? So I want to. So I want to see how many we have here. Let me see from Coin Market Cap. Let me see how many cryptocurrencies. So Coin Market Cap has ten thousand and forty. So ten thousand and forty. Can we all see it? 10,000. The last one is Velodrum Finance. With its price as uh, three, 3 cents. 0 0.0397 cents. Less than, less than 10 cents. So if you want to read more about the cryptocurrencies, once you come to CoinMarketCap, what you do is that you just click on the you just click on the on the, the particular cryptocurrency they will show you its current price i don't know whether you can see it so this is its current price here its current price then you you are, you are also privileged to see the chart where where it started from the price at where it started from and uh, how it rose and fell and its current price as we speak and once you scroll down a bit now you'll be able to read about it you can be you'll be able to read about that cryptocurrency below so cm price live daily so if you want to read more you just click on read more then you're able to read more about that particular cryptocurrency so you can you you, you can uh, actually read more about the cryptocurrencies from coin market cap so coinmarketcap.com once you go there you'll be able to read about them you can also read about cryptos from another site known as coin ranking coinranking.com coin ranking coinranking.com so coin ranking to you are able to have access to the cryptocurrencies so you are able to see the cryptocurrency by name so the first one is bitcoin and its current price as we speak now is $29,780 then ethereum current price $1,782 
So if you want to search for any cryptocurrency, there's a search. Can you all see the search bar here? So then you can type it. You can type that cryptocurrency. So I'm searching for Dogecoin. Dogecoin. So this is Dogecoin. Its current price is 0 0.08234 cents. And then uh, if you want to check the calculation, maybe how uh, maybe you say you want to buy ten dollars worth of Dogecoin. So if you are buying ten dollars worth of Dogecoin, you will receive one hundred and twenty one point four three Dogecoin. So you can use the crypto calculator there. Then you can read about it. So. You can also read about Dogecoin here. Once you scroll down, you'll be able to get information about that particular cryptocurrency to actually read on. And they'll also tell you the exchanges where you can buy that particular cryptocurrency from. So you can buy Dogecoin from Binance, Coinbase, Upbit, AAX, Gate.io. So I think one of our, uh, our meetings, our next meetings, we will be uh, looking at exchanges and wallets so basically this is how you you search for the cryptos like you open either coin market cap coin ranking there are many and the final one i'll still introduce to you is coin geeko coin geeko coin geeko so it's also a platform where you can have access to the cryptocurrencies, their current prices, their chart, how they are, the, the chart looks like. And once you click on them, you click on any of the cryptocurrencies, you are able to read more about that particular cryptocurrency. All right, so examples of cryptocurrencies. So like I was saying, we have Bitcoin, we have, and this is the symbol for Bitcoin. We have Ethereum, we have Cardano, and these are their abbreviations. So Bitcoin is BTC, Ethereum is ETH. So maybe there are some articles or maybe some videos you'll be watching online and do not mention the full name, maybe Bitcoin. What you hear is BTC or ETH or EDA. Either is still what stands for Cardano or USDT, that is Tita or BNB, that is Binance Coin. Then we have DOT, that is Polka DOT. We have XRP, XRP stands for Ripple. Then Litecoin, LTC, Link is Chain Link. Then ICP, that is Internet Computer, BCH. So among others, so that is that is some. These are some examples of cryptocurrencies we have but there are, there are many we have over 10,000 of them so if you want to explore around them the sites i just showed you coin market cap coin ranking coin gecko you can read more about the cryptocurrencies from these official websites so why cryptocurrencies why are cryptocurrencies so important and uh, people are just craving to learn about cryptocurrencies just as we are doing today what is so important about cryptocurrencies so the reason why cryptocurrencies are important and different from our traditional currencies we have is that they are permissionless so cryptocurrencies are permissionless so they are permissionless in the sense that no entity that is no entity or no body can stop you from using cryptocurrencies so that is the beautiful thing about cryptocurrencies no government can stop you from using them unlike centralized payments systems where your bank account or your bank access can be freezed and you, you can no longer have access to your currency, or maybe the government can just decide to change uh, maybe the currency, and if you don't go to the bank with the currency you are holding, they become useless. But in cryptocurrencies, it's not so. So no entity or nobody can stop you from using 
cryptocurrency so you can be lying in the comfort of your rooms and making transactions 24 7 without any problem from anybody is this not so interesting and beautiful yes it is so that is what makes people now want to learn more about cryptocurrencies and even old cryptocurrencies and also begin to transact cryptocurrencies then secondly it is cryptocurrencies are censorship resistant so it means it's difficult for hackers to bring down the network so for example bitcoin like this no hacker can hack the system and bring down the entire system it's not possible because it is not centralized it's not just at one company or on one computer but the server is what this uh, the the blockchain is what distributed across the world so we have data centers in or servers in usa servers in africa servers in asia servers in europe servers in australia that is holding the bitcoin blockchain that is holding the ethereum blockchain that is holding the cardano blockchain so it becomes decentralized and some blockchains have also made it such that if a hacker is hacking to take control over the blockchain like want to hack like 51 percent of the blockchain they make it expensive so you the hacker will have to pay millions of dollars before you are able to hack the system and you know hackers already you are already hacking the system for money so maybe if you are hacking a particular blockchain and the price you pay for hacking it or to be able to have control is to pay like 100 billion dollars <laughs> i'm not sure any hacker will be interested or will have such amounts of money to to hack the system so it's actually censorship resistant and it's also expensive to hack these blockchains then the the third importance of cryptocurrencies is that it's a cheap and fast payment method and which is very true so when you make a transaction to someone at the other side of the world your money can be with them within seconds which is very true I, I know some of you on this call maybe might have done some transactions uh, on the blockchain or with cryptocurrency maybe you have sent you have received some cryptocurrencies from somebody or you've sent cryptocurrency uh, to another person they, they, are, they are very fast one of the fastest once i have known is a internet computer icp it goes at light speed immediately you send just like text message within seconds it's already in your wallet so somebody can be in the u.s send you maybe monies in cryptocurrency in crypto maybe like he's sending you one million dollars and within three seconds the money is already in your wallet in africa so that is how fast these cryptocurrencies are all right so basically that is uh, the brief overview on cryptocurrencies as well so we are just going to touch on this ones to little by little then we, we we bring the lesson to a close today then schedule another meeting in the course of next week so smart contracts smart contracts so maybe uh as from now on you i'm sure maybe some of you have heard about it and maybe some of you are yet to even hear about smart contracts so basically what are smart contracts so smart contracts are simply smart contracts are simply programs stored on a blockchain that run when some predetermined conditions are met so when we say a smart contract so they are programs stored on the blockchain that run when some predetermined conditions are met <clears throat> okay so let me cite an example here akusika you are a nurse so a smart contract can be maybe let's say your hospital is running their healthcare management system on the blockchain where maybe you log in to key in patients information uh, and make
make diagnosis. So the smart contract can be such that pay Akusika thousand dollars when she diagnoses every patient and saves the results on the on the database of the healthcare system. So anytime, so now that's that's that program or that code has been written onto the blockchain. So anytime a patient comes and Akusika enters that data of the patient onto uh, their healthcare system and saves it onto the blockchain database, then what the system will do is that it should pay Akusika, it should uh, credit Akus Akusika's account or bank account with thousand dollars. And this one can never be changed. There's no third party that you say, no, Akusika doesn't deserve thousand dollars. So let me let me take seven hundred dollars and give her three hundred dollars. No, there's no third party in a smart contract. So here you are paid for the amount of work you are the amount of work you do without any third party coming in to politicize the thing. I don't know, is that example clear? for smart contracts. Yeah. I want to hear from everybody. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So that is how smart contracts work. And uh, Brayton and I don't know maybe any other IT person who is here, we know these are these are some conditional statements in programming. So uh, the if if conditions, if else, and the likes. So these are the the statements that are used to program smart contracts. And smart contracts can actually be applied everywhere or anywhere. I can cite another example in the agri sector. Maybe let's say farmers. Maybe you go to insure your farm. Maybe against drought. Maybe you've gone to farm, let's say, 100 acres of uh, rice. And uh, you go to insure the land, the 100 acres, your crops. So maybe the, the smart contract, the insurance smart contract on the blockchain can be that pay Roland one million dollars if it doesn't rain for like uh, two weeks consistently if it doesn't rain for like two weeks consistently after he has plowed or after he has sown his rice so pay Roland one million dollars if it doesn't rain for two weeks and so so this is a smart contract that has been programmed on the blockchain so what happens is that so should it happen that it doesn't rain for two weeks after you have planted your 100 acres land of rice so if it doesn't rain for two weeks <laughs> uh, clearly literally you and i know that uh, the farmer has already lost like that because it means the crops the crops have perished so what happens is that once that happens, the system will automatically pay Roland one million dollars if it doesn't rain for two weeks. So it means you have been compensated. So here, there is no need for Nadmo coming to uh, look at what is going on. Maybe they will now go and collect their monies, <coughs> and now they will also have to take a percentage. And at the end of the day, you will take something little. So this one, there is no third party there. Whatever was in the agreement is what you take and there's no delays once the conditions are met you are paid the money so that is how smart contracts are, are operated so they typically are used to automate the execution of an agreement so that so that all participants can be immediately certain of the outcome without any middleman involvement or time loss so you see it so there's no middleman here 
to be delaying the process or to withhold your funds or there's no waste of time immediately uh, the unexpected happens you are paid or you are compensated so that is how smart contracts work <coughs> and this is how so this entire process we are seeing in this diagram we starts from here where I have just uh, uh, drawn the box around so this entire process is executed using a smart contract so let's say Tom wants to send Tom wants to send money to Victor so first of all Tom uses the blockchain so Tom uses the blockchain as a platform to execute the entire uh, transaction so Tom uses the blockchain to execute the entire transaction so now the transaction is recorded in the blockchain and I think this is already similar to what we're looking at how blockchain works so now every party in the network is notified of the transaction I think I spoke about this already so all devices on the blockchain so this mobile phone which is connected to the blockchain is notified this laptop is notified this other mobile phone is notified that there's a transaction that has been sent on the blockchain so what happens is that the transaction the transaction gets approved so the transaction gets approved if everything is fine so if if the transaction meets the requirements on the blockchain maybe the person that is the right address uh, the destination wallet is available so if uh, everything is true then the transaction is approved then what happens the wallet is what initialized the wallet is now ready to send the money uh, to Victor that is from Tom's wallet it's now ready to send the money so the online transfer happens so once Tom hits on send so the online transaction or the online transfer happens and within seconds Victor receives the money in his wallet and now the transaction is complete so this entire process is run as a smart contract so that is how the smart contract actually works